Hey everybody out there, hope you're doing well. Julian Rankin here from the Walter Anderson Museum of Art. Welcome back to The Connect. It's becoming a regular thing, this culture show where we connect you to people and places outside your door. And today we're gonna spend some time at Shearwater Pottery. So we always start with an artwork and, and usually it's a Walter Anderson work and a quote, but today we wanted to, to do a Peter Anderson quote. And we're looking at a, a beautiful selection of ceramics that are now at Shearwater, actually. This is a, a photo from their Facebook page and a quote by Peter Anderson from 1928, where he said, The glazes I'm anxious to do now are not just colors, but textures and effects. Almost emotion. Glazes you can't take your hands off of. And so that's a great segue to, um, to joining us today is our special guest, Beth, Beth Ashley from Shearwater. And now, Beth, you're on screen, and it, it's a beautiful day at Shearwater, I expect. I, I biked by there just a little while ago. How are you today? I'm good, and it is a beautiful day here at Shearwater. So, you know, so many people know about Shearwater pottery. It's been there for more than 90 years, but you still get folks coming from all over the world and, and people who don't know about it. So how do you encapsulate all that history for, for people who just walk up and discover you for the first time? Well, um, usually when they walk up and discover me for the first time, they're coming through our front doors, and we get lots of reaction from coming through our front door because, oh, oh, that's beautiful, because it is beautiful in here. And so I let them know that we are a family pottery and that my grandfather, um, Peter Anderson, founded the business in 1928. Um, Peter was a master potter. He did go to school for pottery. And um, when he opened the business, of course, it was depression times coming. So um, he was able to successfully open a pottery business during that time, and that makes us all proud. Peter had two other brothers who are also artists. Peter was in charge of um, throwing pots on the wheel, creating our glazes, teaching how to make molds and fire in the kilns. And his two brothers, Walter and Matt, joined him a couple of years later and built what we call as the annex, where they do the figurines and the decorated ware. And so that's why we have the mix of pottery we have through all three brothers' contributions. Um, we are still a family potter, pottery. The um, current potters are James Anderson and Peter Wade Anderson, Peter's son and grandson. And, of course, we have... Chris Debley, who is Walter's grandson, Adele Lawton, who is Mac's daughter, Patricia Van Dyson, who is Peter's daughter, decorating pots. And it's a kind of family affair, although we have some members that work here who have worked here over 30 years that are like family as well. But that's basically what I tell them about Shearwater Pottery when they come in. The pottery kind of speaks for itself, so I don't have to do a lot of talking. <laughs> that's right. And and you, I know, we're th have been thinking a lot about you know, the, the woman who started it all, you know, Annette McConnell Anderson, who, you know, purchased that, that plot of land. How would you describe just the, the landscape of Shearwater? And, and what do you think about, about the lady who started it all? Well, you know, she designed with an appreciation for the nature and how the buildings were set and cooled. All those things factor in, but more so she defined those boys to be artists by making them practice at art. And she gave them opportunity and encourage them and i don't think a lot of mothers would encourage their um teenage boys to go pursue artistic endeavors but she certainly did whether it was assigning them to write a story or paint something i'm not sure papa was always happy with that but that's what she did so she was a force of nature and she's still a force of nature in this business so and she drives me each day as well and what i notice about shearwater when i go in there and it's whether you're in the showroom or the workshop, there's a warmth to it, not just the people, and which is a big part of it, the family atmosphere, but also the place itself has a warmth. You know, how would you describe what it's like to, to work on that compound when there's so many family members and friends who are all rowing in the same direction? Well, it's, uh, you know, the first turn you make is on that dirt road and you immediately know you're stepping back a little bit. And so the warmth starts right there with nature. And yes, box turtles do cross the road, and that's where there, why there's a sign there. And each step back is a step closer, whether it be a raccoon feeding on the bird bath or whatever, you feel more relaxed back here. It's a little closer to nature than your typical store. So in the 
showroom itself has a warm wooden walls and people over the years will come into the showroom and tell me, you know, I came here when I was a kid and I used to do field trips or, you know, me and my wife got married and we went to Biloxi on our honeymoon and this is our 60th wedding anniversary. We went to Shearwater way back then. Mm -hmm. These people have memories of Shearwater and playing in the trash pile is what my grandfather called it. I don't think it was really a trash pile because they got treasures out of that trash pile. So each one of those visitors brings their warmth in the door with them, with their stories and their memories of Shearwater. And Shearwater means a lot to a great many people, not just our family. You know, that, that it's part of their childhood. Yeah. And, I, you know, if, can you tell people about the the three, there's more than three buildings, but the three sort of distinct areas of the process about how it, how stuff gets into the showroom. Where does it go beforehand? How is that all done? Um, sure. We have the workshop, um, which is where the pots are thrown and we mix up the, what I call buff body clay. It's the brown body clay. You mix it up, you create clay sheets out of it, or you pour it in a mold, but you manufacture the pottery out there. Then there's a second room where you dry the pottery and get it ready and do actual bisque firing and come back out and you're working in the glaze room and you glaze the pottery. And then of course the kiln is the third part of the workshop building. But in addition, there's that annex building across the way, which also has its own kiln where they decorate the pottery, fire the pottery, and then glaze the pottery much like we do except for they use paints instead of glaze, and it's done while it's still, quote, greenware, which is ware that has not been fired. Excellent. So um, is there any area you want to show us outside of the showroom? One of the things I, I love is, you know, Walt, people don't realize that Walter Anderson's old cottage is sitting right there, and a lot of the family members have lived on on their, uh, on their that property for so long. You know, t can, you, can, you, can we walk outside and take a look at nature? Well, we can. And we have, you know, of course, we lost the barn, which is where um, Mayor stayed for many years, which was right across from the showroom. It, it was where we first started doing the printing of Realizations silk screens now, block prints at the time. So now we have the print shed over there, and that's across from the showroom. And, of course, Walter's Cottage is to the left. And I don't know how well you can see, because I wasn't planning this part. And then Billy's house is over there. Billy is Walter Anderson's son. And Leaf is just right down there across the way in a big, beautiful house that's attached to nature. And my mother is down at the front, which we can't see from here. So is it, And the front is always on the water. Is it just like uh, you know, growing up in a family that you just, you just holler, holler when you need somebody? Something like that. Yeah, they all took care of each other. And, of course, as cousins, we sure ran the roost around here. I had lots of cousins to play with. We did plays. We played in the marsh. We played on the old Patricia, which was my grandfather's shrimp boat. So uh, we were a tight little clan. So, I, you know. I, and shot each other with fireworks. But <laughs> I wanted to talk a bit about um, about the, the, the Peter Anderson lineage. So, you know, for those who don't know, you already said it, that, that Peter was – the the potter who who started it all and then of course jimmy and you've got that wonderful image that you took the other day where he's in front of a window and the light streaming in um and then it goes down and you know and peter wade is 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 there learning and he's a, a master in his own right but he, peter had a quote that you mentioned to me about how nature fit into the whole creative process uh, what was that well it was actually jimmy who um one day was telling me when I was working at the workshop that when he used to get stuck and not what, know what to throw on the wheel, Papa, Peter, I call Peter Papa, he told Jimmy, you look to nature and you find out what to throw. And you'll find some pieces in the showroom like the pine cone goblet, you know, the Camille dish, the Hurricane Katrina bowl, where, yeah, you're looking to nature to kind of inspire your creativity. And even that fox that you saw the other day, y'all have got that in ceramic form. Yes, we do. <laughs> Lots of critters in ceramic form, right? So, you know, one of the things I wanted to talk about, too, is, you know, Shearwater has this quality where it's um, it's stuck in time. It's a, it's a preserved in time because y'all do care for so much history. But you've also gone through your share of 
of trial and disaster over the decades. And, and this one, the pandemic's a whole different thing. You know, how has that resilience at Shearwater uh, made, made manifest in this current climate? What are y'all doing differently? Well, I did furlough the decorators in the annex because of, you know, obvious reasons. And now we're becoming a virtual location. I'm FaceTiming with people. Um, it has a bit of sadness to it. My mother works at the showroom here with me, and she's used to greeting customers, answering the phone, and things are changing a little bit where I'm more the customer interface, and it's kind of sad. Mom's not doing her story thing and greeting the customers that she's loved so much, and she's missing some of our old customers. You know, some people, you know, they're older and are protecting themselves and can't come out. So I'm getting her to start peeking at Facebook now, and, and when Brenda Wetzel says hi, then then I say, Mom, Brenda Wetzel says hi. So she's connecting, but it's different. I did get her on FaceTime the other day as well. That's wonderful. But that's that's part of the pottery, pottery charm, too. They come here. Customers come here to heal. It happened at Katrina, and it's happening with this pandemic. Mm-hmm. They call. They need this feeling with them. So we've been doing a lot of Facebook posts. And I am getting a lot of feedback that it is healing, whether they come and I, some of these people I take outside, they're stuck in a big city. So I FaceTime with them and we look at pottery and then at the end I say, hey, you want to go outside? And it makes them happy. You know, it, it, it makes them react. I'm thinking it's happy. Sometimes it doesn't sound as happy as I think, but I think it's happy. <laughs> well, I know it would make a lot of folks happy if, if you showed us some of the things that are, are coming in, out of the of the workshop or the annex, um, you know, it's up to you where you want to take us. It could be back into the showroom or it could be somewhere where you've got some bisqueware out, whatever you want to show us. I know people want to see, see what's out there right now. Well, right now I think what makes people drool more is the fact that they're not coming in the showroom and the showroom is so full. So they're like, Oh, I've never seen the showroom so full. And I think they're sad that they can't really be here because the showroom's pretty full right now. It's, you know, it's amazingly full. Is there anything you want to show us some close-ups of that you are especially liking these days? Oh, I like everything, <laughs> you know. And I change my mind all the time what I, about what I like best, so I don't think I'm trustworthy. Of course, I love to see Earth and Sky. Bell paints it. It's Walter's design, but it's just gorgeous. Can you, you see it well? Oh, yeah. Okay. I love that. And then, of course, there's this beautiful seagull vase. Again, Dell just brings a touch of inspiration to everything. She started painting these tie bases. This is her daddy's fish bowl. That's gorgeous as well. And then she did a little bit of experiment in her and Nancy Grace with some slip decorated. Can you see the little critters? I can. We haven't done slip decorated things in a very, very long time. I'd say the 70s. So that was kind of cool. Around here, you always get a little surprise, right? Here's something special. Um... Well, here's a Dell decorated piece, but this is Leif Anderson actually has a pot in there. Look, that's her little dog Lumen. Hold, and, it, hold it up a little bit higher for oh, us. Oh, sorry. Or the phone a little down. That's Better? perfect. That's perfect. Anyway, look at that bluebird. That's fun, huh? Oh yeah. You know, one of my favorite pieces that we have at the museum is uh, the chesty horse because it has such a cool story and it's that one that you know we're told that that walter you know he was designing it and and he he made the mane and the tail and he did those by hand and then he realized it wasn't going to be nearly efficient enough to to make it like that every time so it's kind of the prototype and then you've got the ones that y'all still do um that are taking that same mold and i love that that idea that that the molds from from so so long ago are just there, and and then the new artists pick it up and and they can design it, and that's it's really special. I mean, how how do you even put into words what it means to to be a caretaker of of that history, especially when so many of of the people like we talked about are, are living who have known um, and experienced all that history. I, you know, it's like like having something in your childhood that you love. I, and you just don't let go of it. So I don't know that I look at it like a, quote, 
business kind of thing. I kind of look at like this is my childhood, this is my legacy. It kind of comes natural. It's not a so I don't know how to answer that question other than say that's that's my, that's my being. That's part of my job, but it's really part of my soul. Yeah. And people, people who um, who maybe don't know you so well, you 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 could have been you could be doing a million other things out in the world, but you made a commitment and you you found where you're supposed to be here at Shearwater. Um, tell us a bit about about that whole story about how you came came back and 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 that was after Katrina, correct? Yeah, that was after Katrina, and um, I was working in Nashville, Tennessee. And the company I was working for, a very good company, gave me three months off. So I was down here immediately after the storm, and the goal was to salvage everything we could, both silk screens for the realizations, all of our pottery out in the woods, our molds, as you say, they were in really bad shape and in trouble because the storm had hit and molds were all over the yard and stuff and had to be cleaned. So, um, yeah. It just hit me so hard that it was gone. It was time to come home. So within a year, I had moved myself back home. I needed to be back home. That's beautiful. It's a, you can't ignore a family legacy like that. It's part of it. it. It was no decisions at that point. It was made for me. Well, there's such a poetry to, to Shearwater. I mean, we're you know to, to see Jimmy spinning the wheel and to see the folks in the workshop painting it, um, it really is a, a magical place. And... Um, this is a strange time in the pandemic, but I, I'm I'm thrilled to see the way that you've continued to represent Shearwater and and do all the things. I think you said the other day that you were you were happy because you uh, you beat Whamma in the in the Facebook game, which we're proud of, proud to say. I did. Yeah, was... Yay! <laughs> but yeah, they like those stories about Graham and Papa. They do, and you've got them. You've got them. And the old ladies in the back of the truck and chairs, right? Yep. And so if you, I mean, if this is a a trick question, but if you, if you did have to take a story or two, a memory, you know, something humorous maybe, or something meaningful from your time at Shearwater to put in a time capsule, to communicate to to the generations to come, what, what what could you reach for? What memory or story really sticks with you? Well, it's not humorous. It it happened during Katrina and it was when, uh, Wilma and Rita were bearing down and we thought we were going to get hit again. So I didn't have any help out here at Shearwater cleaning up. And I thought, oh, I'm never going to get this cleaned up. And um, it was the first time I really had cried after Katrina. And I was starting to break down. And I walked beside the showroom, well, where the showroom was supposed to be, and looked down and found a picture of Gran and Sissy learning to drive. And then I really busted out. I don't cry very much, but I, I, I definitely cried that day. But within about 10 minutes, I was like, oh, no, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This means a lot. This is generations, and this is a gift we got from our ancestors. So I think if anything I could put in a time capsule would be for them to understand how important this is and significant. You don't have a lot of small family businesses that maintain their quality and the legacy approach the old time approach and and make it so i'm very proud to be part of it making and i hope the next generations will be as proud as i am but i hope they don't have to go through katrina to find it right that's beautiful that really is and and i think what we what we should be saying to the public and you're showing us all this great stuff in the showroom is that the way that family businesses continue for for 90 plus years is to have folks supporting them. So, you know, there's sheer water, there's realizations, there's so many small businesses and artists that are working all over this community and all over the state and the region and the country. And so uh, I just encourage everybody to, to go out and see what y'all have got. So how would you tell people if they want to do some more virtual FaceTiming with Beth, some, here's some more of your stories online while you're doing this virtual thing, how should they get in touch with you? They should hook up to Shearwater Pottery Facebook, and then if they want to drool, they can always go to our website and see all the different things we make, because I always have customers that come in and say, ooh, I've never seen that. I've been coming here for 30 years. But we do have a website. It doesn't work well with smartphones because it's got too much stuff on it. (laughs) Beautiful. Oh, no, I just called pottery stuff. There's a story for you. My grandfather 
you never call pottery stuff. He made me look up the definition of stuff. Pottery is not stuff, that's for sure. Well, it's a treasure, and you're a treasure, and we really thank you for taking the time today. Anything else you want to say to the folks out there before we bid them farewell? I always have to say thank you because over all the times we've been down, it's always been Shearwater customers that have allowed us to come back and recover from these things. And we've been through a lot of hard times, and I appreciate them, and I know they love us, and I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Beth. It's been a pleasure spending time with you today, and I look forward to seeing you in person again very soon. Okay. Me too. Everybody stay safe. All right. Bye, Beth. Bye-bye. Well, folks, that was a, a treat for me and, and a treat for all of us at the museum to be able to be in such proximity to the Anderson family and the extended family that is doing such great work, continuing the legacy and inspiring people all over the map. So um, we uh, are really thrilled to have had you with us and we look forward to doing this again soon. Stay tuned to our Facebook page as we uh, unveil guests to come. But in the meantime, you'll have a beautiful day, have an inspired day and appreciate family as, as Beth has so um, inspired us to do. So y'all have a good one. We'll see you again on the connect. <laughs>